everybody happy this morning? If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. God is good in you. Let us go to God in prayer. Oh, gracious God, our heavenly Father. Here we are once again on this cool morning. Just want to say thank you, Lord, thank you. for life, health, and a portion of your strength. Thank you, Lord, for just lying down on last night, early rising this morning, closing us in our right mind, giving us another chance and another opportunity to make our wrongs right. God, we want to just say thank you. Thank you. Father God, we just lifting up holy hands this morning, giving you all the praise and honor that is due unto you. Father God, we just can't thank you enough for who you are and all of our lives. Father God, we ask that you just bless this church family in a mighty way. Church is everywhere, Lord God. Father God, bless mankind all over this land and country. And then, Lord, we thank you for just bringing all of us down the dangerous highway. Thank you for the one that is here and the one that is on their way. Father God, we ask that you just bless this man of God who's going to preach and teach the word. In season and out of season. Not only that, but his family as well, Lord God. God, continue to just be with us. Continue to breathe your anointing power on all of us this morning, Lord God. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. God, we say thank you. For it is in the mighty name of Jesus, I do pray. Amen. Thank God. You may be seated. We're going to ask the brother of the mass to give us a selection at this time.
Mama T, Dean Hart, Mama Alma Glenn, Mama Barry Myers, Mama Barry Mason, Sister Rosetta Aiken, Brother Grover Smith, Sister Hazel Smith, Sister Eddie Porter, that's Eddie P. Amen. Amen. Sister Vanessa Glenn, Amen. Who is still trucking on me? Amen. Give her a hand.
from March the 5th, 2023. Happy Lent season, everyone, once again. Continue to pray for those on our prayer list, families going through bereavement, and each other. Men, I hope you're pulling out your calendar because you got a few invites. On March the 11th, the Foster Chapel Baptist Church Men's Ministry will host their annual men's conference, which will be held at Foster Chapel Baptist Church with Reverend Joe C. Floyd of Solid Rock Ministry in Union and Sister Tracy Copeland, who is a case manager of community long-term care with the state of South Carolina, where they'll be presenters at this conference. That service begins at 9 a.m. No, 2, 2, 2. <laughs> that following Sunday on March the 12th, the Foster Chapel Men's Ministry will host their Men's Conference Worship Service, and that service is beginning at 9 a.m. The guest speaker will be the Honorable Senator, Senator Carl B. Allen of District 7 in Greenville County, South Carolina. The theme is Christian Men Preparing for Greatness. Also on March the 19th, you all have been invited to the Bethany Baptist Church where they'll be hosting their annual Men's Day program beginning at 2 p.m. The guest speaker will be the Reverend Dr. Elijah Ray, the pastor of Wise Chapel Baptist Church. Also, the Backlit River Baptist Congress of Christian Education will be held virtually this year. The event will take place April the 17th through April the 20th, 2023. You can begin to register for those classes up until March the 25th. If you're interested in participating in those classes, see me following service as I have the registration <coughs> form and a list of classes you may participate in. Also, continue to bring your items for the Porter House Ministry. Do we have any guests at this time that care to stand? If not, I welcome you all and I hope you all have a great day and also happy birthday and happy anniversary to all who celebrate in the month of March. Thank you and have a great day. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Jimmy. Thank you. Thank you for those announcements. We'd ask that everyone govern yourselves accordingly uh, to our announcements. Uh, Pastor, on reminders, I just want to say thank you. Thank you so very much to all of those who pressed their way out on last Sunday to the association building. Amen. Well, I'd like her to Sunday with a wonderful and joyous uh, worship celebration that we had on the last week. Amen. Amen. We thank God for it. We thank God for it. And in that particular setting, amen, we had one that came back home uh, that was restored. Amen. Back to the fold. So, amen. And peace.
sit where you may in the sanctuary. Uh, amen. We've come through, what, two, two and a half years. You ought to thank God for considering that and that you would uh, uh, be your choice here in the near future. In the very near future, be your choice whether you want to wear your mask or not. But right now, we are all wearing masks. Amen. That has not been eased up. To God be the glory. Amen. 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 So the lady makes a sense her love uh, to each and every one of you. And I want to thank God for each and every one of you also. And tell somebody, bring somebody to church with you. Amen. Amen. Bring somebody to church with you. To God be the glory. Amen. Come on, choir. Bless us again. Come on, bless us again. Bless us again.
thank you today for everything you've done, everything you're doing, and everything you're going to do in our lives. Yeah. But now, Father God, we come to you to ask you to bless our military. Yeah. Father God, we ask if you will just put a hedge of protection around them. Father God, no matter where they are, no matter what they're doing right now, Father God. Because, Father God, we really need you to stay in their lives, Father God. Yeah. Stay with them. Yeah. Father God, as they stay on the battlefield. Father God, we ask if you will just bless their families, Father God, as they go and do what they've been commissioned to do. Yeah. And now, Father God, we ask if We'll just bless our tithes and our offerings. We ask that you will just bless those who have the money to give, those who want to give and just don't have. It. And Father God, we ask that you will just use our tithes for the upbuilding of your kingdom. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank God. Thank God for you. You are not forgotten. You are not. 
have said to you, you must be born again. Is that what your Bible says? Mm -hmm. You may be seated in the presence of Almighty God. Amen. Do not marvel. Don't be surprised. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. Beautiful passage of scripture as we embark upon this morning. And the Lord laid in my spirit for a subject topic. You don't have to wonder. You don't have to wonder. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for this moment of proclaiming your holy and your righteous word. Father God, I stand now behind the sacred desk asking that you would endow me with powerful on high that I may teach thy word, preach thy word that your children may be edified, exhorted, encouraged, and lifted up. Lord, I give you all the glory, I give you all the honor, and I give you all the praise. Now that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, you are my strength, and you are my redeemer. And all of God's children say amen, amen, and amen. Look over at somebody, look over at somebody this morning with all the millions that you have, and simply tell them you don't have to wonder. Uh, unless one is born 
again. The King James Version that Nick and Herbert's like says, unless a man is born again. And that man now is not gender specific to a male. It is specific to all of God's creation. Mm -hmm. yeah. So women, you are not left out. Sisters, you are not left out. I want to let you know that. And, and then look what Jesus does when he gets to verse 5. In verse 5, it says, now it is written, Jesus answered, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Do your Bible say that? Yeah. If your Bible don't say that, then you need to get rid of that book you read. <laughs> Amen. Uh, Amen. And Jesus here now in verse 5, many are confused by verse 5 when he says, unless one is born of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. It is now, Brother Trent, Brother Thompson, Minister Thompson, that some feel that this particular passage is talking about baptism. Amen. Y'all go along with me this morning. Talking about baptism, but I got to let you know, according to what Jesus said, that we must be born again. Mm -hmm. Amen. I want to let you know that water cannot save you. Mm -hmm. If you think that because you were baptized that you are saved, I want to let you know something. News alert, flash alert, amen. You went into the water as a dry devil and you came up as a, you got a wet devil. Why? Because water will not save you. Hmm? Well, it won't save you. It won't save you. So, first of all, we have to be born again. <laughs> so, he is, uh, the theologian and them talking about baptism, uh, if we read further, I think we can deduct and exegete from the scriptures more so what Jesus is saying. Amen. If I look at verse 6, Verse 6 tells me that that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Now, the writer John puts that in there simply because of the fact that we all have, if we choose to, two births. Hmm? We definitely have one birth. Your one birth is when we all were born into the world. When mama carried us for a certain amount of time. Wasn't always nine months because some of them in, in here might be preemies. Amen? Amen? Means you came before nine months. You was rushing to get into the world. Huh? So the flesh now uh, is the portion where we are physically born, where we were carried in the mother's womb in water, encapsulated. Amen? And at the time, the right time, hmm, then the Lord allowed us to enter this world. I want to let you know that we all came into a world of sin. Hmm? Amen. We all came into a world of sin. So when you look at that scripture, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. If I only came into this world because God allowed me to. Amen. But I never fulfilled the second portion of that particular verse, being born by the Spirit of God. 
Amen. That I'm still in the flesh. I'm still in my first birth. Are y'all with me out there? Hey, amen. I'm going to come and get you because the second birth is when I give my life to the Lord. And that's what Jesus and Nicodemus is having a conversation about here in chapter 3. He's talking about uh, Nicodemus is asking the question, how can a man be born again? Hmm? And we got to understand how we can be born again. Amen. God has a purpose for all of us. Jesus plainly makes the point now uh, when he looks at uh, verse 7, when he speaks verse 7, he says, now do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. Look over somebody and just tell them, don't, 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 don't. Don't shout it at them. Amen. Some of them mad when you tell them that anyway. But just tell somebody you must be born again. And yeah, you got to be born again. I, I didn't say it. Jesus said it. It's right here in the word of God, Brother Dawkins. It's, it's right there. Jesus said you must be born again. Now, now let me help somebody. Let me help somebody. I want to help you this morning because just as Jesus now helped Nicodemus and all of us by telling us that, I want to reiterate what Jesus has already said so you don't have to wonder. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to wonder. Amen. I don't want anybody walking out of here this morning having to wonder. So, so let me come and get you. Let, let me come and get you. There are a lot of people in this world, amen, that are good people. Hmm? There are a lot of people in this world that are really good people, Sister Patsy. Amen. And they'll tell you I'm good. They'll tell you I don't do this. They'll tell you I don't do that. They'll tell you I don't go here and I don't go there. They'll tell you I love everybody. Won't they do it? Huh? We got some people in this world that uh, testify they are good people, brother birds. They'll give you the shirt off their back. Won't they do it? They'll do anything they can for you. Won't they do it? They don't use foul language. Amen. At least they say they don't. And they don't do it in your presence. You don't know what they do behind closed doors. Can I get a witness? They don't drink or defile the temple. Amen. Something in the Bible talks about drinking. It says the drunkard shall not inherit the kingdom of God. A drunkard shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That's a message for another time. Amen. And then some people tell me, said, well, I don't smoke. Amen. The Bible does not, you find me a scripture in the Bible where it talks about not smoking. Sh show me that in the word of God. What the Bible does say is that you are the temple of God and you should not defile the temple of God. That's what it says. So anything that we put in to defile the temple of God, we shouldn't be doing it. Hmm? We shouldn't be doing it. That, that, that's where that comes from. A amen. There, there are some good people, really good people. They keep to themselves and they don't bother nobody. Huh? Y'all know some people like that? They keep to themselves. They don't bother nobody. And, and did I fail to mention there are some good people, really good people, they come to church. Hmm? Yeah, we're going to talk about it today. There are some good people, really good people, amen, that's taking communion and shouldn't be taking communion. Amen. This little chassis cup right here. Amen. But they figured that I'm good. I'm really good. So I can partake. Why? Because I'm good. Huh? 
ah, let me help you out. Let me help you out. Even though these good people, mm -hmm. even though these really good people, y'all hear me out there, Facebook, YouTube, even though these good people have all of these qualities, hmm? Yeah. They still gotta be born again. Why? Because the Bible says you must be born again. You don't have to wonder about what Jesus was talking about. He says it right there in his word. In verse 7. That's what he said. So listen, brothers and sisters. God now. God. The God that I serve. The God that you serve. That, that you really know does not operate on what we call a skip lot sampling plan. Some of you that worked in the mill, that worked in production, that worked around lines, you know what a skip lot is. Amen. That means that you, so many pieces come down the line and you uh, uh, sample so many, but then your sampling gets so good that you can skip over a few. Huh? Amen. Why? Because the percentage said that most of them are good. Hmm? That goes back to that good people. That, that really good people. God, uh, Minister Thompson, doesn't operate like that. And that each one of us are held accountable. Each one of us we are held accountable. Amen. So, so a, a skip lot, for those of you who don't know it, it means that only a fraction of the lot submitted is inspected. And we are lots when it comes to God. We are lots when it comes to God. We can, we can just say that hypothetically as, a, as an imagery, as uh, a man, as a metaphor, that we are lots. And God created us all. Ah, yeah, he didn't, he didn't create some of us. He created all of us. Amen, all of us. And, and if he created all of us, he's going to look at all of us. He's going to judge all of us. But make no mistake about it, Sister Jen, one thing that he does is that he gives all of us a choice. He gives every last one of us a choice. Amen. Amen. He gives all of us a choice. Are, are y'all following me out there? Amen. Amen. With that being the case now, all of us must be inspected. Uh -huh. mm? right. Why do you say that, Pastor Mason? We got to be inspected where well, you're a tree. <laughs> you come on, come on. And we inspect fruit, don't we? Yeah. yeah. Well, you know how you go to the grocery store, piggly wiggly, buy low, wherever, Walmart. You get ready to pick up your peaches, your apples, your bananas, your grapes, or whatever, amen. You want to look them over real good. <laughs> don't they do it, Deacon Earl? You want to look them over real good. I don't want no rotten spots. I don't want it to seem like it's, they're getting ready to go bad on me. Amen. Especially the bananas. I don't no two right bananas. Amen. I want a little bit of green on so they can lay around and they can get real nice and yeah. Am I talking to anybody in here? My God, am I? So, amen. Just, just like we expect fruit, God looks at us. But he doesn't force us. He doesn't force us. Amen. He, he looks at us and sees the fruit that we're bearing, bearing in order that we may enter the kingdom of God. And that's why Jesus says what he says right here in verse 7. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must. Huh? He didn't say probably. He said you must. He didn't say almost. Sister Peaches, he said, you must be born again. That, that's what he said. That's what he says. Now, and 
And, and that's why we talked about, I heard Deacon Smith talking about parables this morning. I heard uh, Deacon Good talking about parables this morning. But Jesus also spoke other parables. And he spoke a parable here in Matthew chapter 13, verse 30. And he talks about the wheat and the tare. Uh -huh. Hmm? Yeah. Talks about the wheat and the tare. And, and because of what Jesus does with us, Amen. Amen. He says now, let both, the wheat and the tear, let both grow together until the harvest. The harvest represents when he's coming back. Huh? Let them both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of harvest, at the time of my return, huh? I will say to the reapers, first gather together the tares, and bind them in the bundles to burn them. Mm -hmm. But gather the wheat into my barn. You ought to look over at somebody and say, I want to be in his barn. Huh? I want to be in his barn. Is anybody getting anything out of this word today? Amen. And, and, and we often say, that, that particular passage of scripture, we often say it like this. Jesus said, let the wheat and the tear grow up together and I'll do the separating. That's the way we put it. But the real scripture, uh, the way he says it is in Matthew 13 and 30. That, that's it right there. Amen. That's why, brothers and sisters, that we've got to get it right on this side. Hmm? Got to get it right on this side, for there will be no opportunity on the other side. Hmm? We, we've got to do what we got to do while we're here. Huh? While we got a chance. While the Lord woke us up this morning. Yeah. While we still got strength in our body. Yeah. While you're still in your right mind. Yeah. Can I get a witness? You got to do the right thing. Huh? Am I talking to anybody in here? Yeah. Amen. So the question now, the question now, and I have to tell you, let me make this statement before I ask the question. Being good won't do it. Mm, I don't care how good you are. Being good just won't do it. I don't care how much you give to the poor. Being good won't do it. I don't care how much you love your enemies. Being good just won't do it. Huh? What? That's what the Bible says. The Bible says we must be born again. So the question is, how can we be born again? That's the question because many people don't know how we can be born again. Can I get a witness? Nicodemus didn't even know how. We could be born again. Did it? If you don't believe that Nicodemus didn't know, look at verse 4. Look at verse 4. Nicodemus said to him, him being who? Jesus. He said, how can a man be born when he's old? Hmm? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? My God. My God. Let me help you. Let me help you for free. I won't even charge you for this. It doesn't matter how old you are. See, Nicodemus said, can a man be born when he is old? But I want to let you know it goes further than that. It doesn't matter how old you are. Huh? You still cannot enter where you came from physically a second time. Y'all got it? Y'all listen? Amen. Amen. You cannot go back where you came from a second time. That's why John now, he, he feeds us to let us know that a lifting occurred. <laughs> God, my, help me preach your word, God. Uh, yeah. And it's right there in verse 14. Yeah, I didn't come up with it on my own. It's right there in verse 14. What does he say in verse 14, Pastor Mason? He says, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so 
must have struck man. Be lifted up. It's right there in the Bible. Hmm? John now, what is he talking about? John was going all the way back to the Old Testament. Hmm? All the way back to the Old Testament when, when Moses made a serpent of brass. Some versions say bronze. But he made a serpent of, of bronze or brass. And it, it's in Numbers 21 9. You can go back and look at it. Go back and read it. And he put it on a pole. Can I get a witness? Because what happened, and I'm going to preach that message another time. I've got to say that. But he put it on a pole. Amen. Maybe next week. He put it on the pole. And anyone who looked up at the serpent on the pole was healed. They had to look up. Can I get a witness? Oh, my God. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Because, see, that serpent on that pole. Now, oh, Lord. I can't tell you. I can't tell you. Y'all don't want to hear that. Y'all don't want to hear that. Well, let me go ahead and tell you. That serpent on the pole came back from the serpent on the bed. Ooh. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. So what does John do? I think we need a little joy before we go home. John now compares that serpent on the pole Brass or bronze to the Son of Man. Hmm? Being lifted up by God Almighty. And I just want to let somebody know this morning that anyone or anything that being lifted up comes from the position of being down. Can I get a witness? You ought to look over at somebody and say, that's why I'm lifted up. That's why I'm not the same person that I used to be. Because God lifted me up. I've heard the soul writer say, love lifted me up. Can I get a witness? Can God Almighty? That's why the Bible says now in John, chapter 12 and verse 32 he says if I be lifted up from the earth I'll draw men unto me can I get a witness Jesus was down but he wasn't out you ought to look over somebody and say I've been down but I haven't been out the same that woke me up this morning is the same God that reached way down and he picked me up. Can I get a witness? You ought to be happy because God lifted you from where you were. Lifted you out of the monk and my clay. Lifted all of us from a state of sin. Can I get a witness? It's still wondering about what it takes uh, to get with Almighty God. Uh, he came, uh, didn't he come, uh, so we could be born again. Uh, that's why John goes on and he tells us, For God so loved the world uh, that he gave his only begotten Son, uh, that whoever believes in him uh, should not perish, uh, but have an uh, everlasting and I just need a few people in here this morning that believe in God, that God is the Father, that Jesus is the Son, that the Holy Spirit is my keeper. Can I get a witness?
well and good comes and leads us to the throne of grace. And then we will come back with communion. Amen. Amen. Understand that 
you do proclaim the Lord's death till he comes again. Amen. Look over some.